Come join the community crew. We're making life better for me and for you. Building citizens who respect and care in our school, in the world, in the life we share. It begins with understanding, yeah, that's where it starts. We open up our minds and we open up our hearts. Hi friends, welcome to Let's Talk Kindness. I'm Pink Power. And I'm Pink Passion. We are the superheroes of kindness. This is part one of our special two-part series called Ending Hate, where we will discuss how much hate hurts. Hate is horrible. It destroys communities, relationships, and people. Regardless of the reason for the hate or the object of the hate, hate is hate and it needs to stop. Words and actions of hate deeply hurt people. Can you imagine having the things you don't like about yourself? Say I don't like something about my body. What about my culture or family? Being voiced by someone else who's saying how much they don't like it either. Or imagine having something you love about yourself. Think it's one of your best qualities. For example, your hair, love of reading, or your ability to juggle. And having someone else say how much they don't like it. That's horrible. It affects us in our hearts and our mental health. Let's turn this over to some of our hosts who are now going to share their experiences with hate and how much it hurts. Listen very carefully. It is sad, but it's also the truth. First, we have chicken. It's sad. So sad. For me to tell you that I've experienced hate blacks. There was this animal, and I won't tell you which one, as I don't want to create biases. Whenever he would see me and my friends, he would throw stuff at us, <laughs> trying to make us run away from him so he didn't have to see us. <laughs> One day, while we were out, running free, free on the farm, he came into our coop and trashed it. We were heartbroken. Just heartbroken when we came home. Our beautiful home was destroyed. But luckily, the farm owner, he built us a new one. To this day, I'm afraid to leave because I don't want to come home to that ever again. Here we have our friend Chicken who is now afraid to leave his home because he never wants anything like that to happen again. That's not a good way to live your life. We don't want people living in fear. Although a house or a bike or whatever it is that was destroyed is only a material thing, it hurts that it was destroyed because it was something you cherished. Also, it hurts because someone took it from you because it was yours. It belonged to you and they didn't want you to have it. Now we have Skunk and Snake. Hi everyone! So glad you're here today and learning how to make the world hate-free. Hateful words and actions are not nice. At some point, most of us have had to deal with it, some more than others. Both of us have heard lots of horrible words. As much as we try to ignore and walk away. Turn the other cheek, as some might say. It's hard to get those words out of your head. Once you've heard them, you can't unhear them. There was this one time, someone said something about not liking my white stripe. Very cruel words. I went home and wanted to do something to get rid of it. I almost bought some cream to help turn the white stripe into black. Thankfully, 
I had my friend Snake. He stopped me. I'm just glad I was there when Skunk got the package. The chemicals in the cream would have really hurt him. Hateful words can cause a lot of damage. When hurtful words are said, it makes people not like who they are. And that may cause some people to do things that they wouldn't have done otherwise. For example, buy diet pills or creams like skunk. All of that stuff has chemicals in it and it can really hurt someone. We don't want people to change because others don't like who they are. Everyone should feel proud of who they are and others should be more accepting of all the differences in everyone. It is our differences that make us beautiful. Let's listen to Mouse. Hi friends. Being a mouse, I've often been the target of hateful words and actions. People just don't like it when they see me. I freak a lot of people out. They do and say things that really hurt me. There are times my feelings are so hurt, I don't even want to go out. I figure if I stay within the safety of my mouse hole, no one can hurt me. Once again, we've come back to living in fear. No one should ever be afraid to leave their home because of hateful words or actions. A home no longer feels like your castle or your safe place to be. It feels like a prison, and that's not good. Cal would like to share his experience. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be speaking with all of you today, although I'm really sad to be telling you that I have been the victim of hate, and I'm telling you, it was horrible. Here's what happened. One day, I was like calmly eating my grass out on the farm and enjoying the day, just minding my own business. And when out of nowhere, I was being attacked. Somebody just started beating me and, and yelling hurtful, hateful words at me. Oh, I, I don't even know what was going on. I, I had blood out, and, and when I awoke, there were, were people looking after me and making sure I was okay. I was so lucky to be alive. Oh, and that was just so scary, and, and now I have trust issues. You see, it's because I don't even know who, who attacked me or, or, or why they attacked me. I'm always afraid that one day I'm just going to run into that person again. Not a good way to live your life. It's hard to trust others when you've been a victim of hate, especially something like what happened to Cal. If the person or persons responsible for the hateful actions are never caught or held accountable, the victim feels like they're always looking over their shoulder. Trusting others becomes difficult and it closes you off from living. Last, we have Fox. Being a fox, I'm pretty much thought of as the tough guy. So, personally, I have never been the target of hateful words and actions. Sadly to say though, my friends have, and that breaks my heart. One of my best friends, one of the nicest animals you've ever met, had something horrible happen to her. Well, she decided she was going to go on to that social media and share pictures, videos, and experiences with the family and friends. In the beginning, it was great. People liking her posts, lots of positive comments, many friend requests. She was so happy. However, then one day, all of that changed. Someone posted some nasty, horrible comments on some of her stuff. And when I'm saying nasty, they were nastier than nasty. She was absolutely devastated. Things she was proud of were being used against her. Watching her go through it was so hard because I felt powerless. The actions and words of hate just didn't affect her. It affected all those around her as well. Fox brings up three great points. First, I know many people who have never experienced hate for whatever reason. When I speak to them, they do have a hard time understanding what others have gone through, but they have empathy and compassion for others because they understand hurt. It's hurt caused by other reasons, 
and they don't want anyone to feel that way. They understand the hurt, so they do whatever they can to make sure it doesn't happen to others. Second, social media. The internet can be an amazing tool. It can also be a very dark place where people go to hide and they do and say horrible things. With more and more social media platforms coming out every day, it's hard to keep track of the different ways people can hide and say horrible things without anybody knowing it's them. We're not going to get into social media because it's a very big topic and we could talk for hours. We want everybody just to learn how to be safe when they're on the internet. Use it safely, be wise, and take care of yourself and others. Third, the fact that hate hurts everyone. The hateful action or words may be targeted and may make a person feel isolated, but the effects of that hate is felt by everyone. I know when I'm hurting, people who care about me hurt as well. It's a ripple effect. As it affects everyone, we are all responsible for finding a solution and ending hate. Actions and words of hate deeply affect us, and there are times when people never overcome those words or actions. It's by truly understanding how much hate hurts and that it affects everyone that we will all make great effort to stop it and eventually end it. Pink Power, I'm so saddened by how hate has affected our friends. No one should have to go through what they have. I know, Pink Passion. It makes me very sad as well. But there is hope. Our friends are strong and they are fighters and they are survivors. They have not let hate stop them. Please join us for part two, where our hosts will discuss the different positive ways that we can stand up and end hate, making our world a better, kinder, more caring, and compassionate world for all living things. Well, this brings us to the end of part one. We hope that we've been able to initiate a meaningful conversation with you and those around you. Remember, the more you talk about kindness, the more you will learn about kindness, and the more kindness will happen. So, let's talk kindness! Activities. Have you or someone you know experienced words or actions of hate? Please write or draw a picture about it. Write a paragraph or draw a picture explaining why words and actions of hate are so hurtful to people. Research a person who's overcome words and actions of hate. Write a paragraph outlining their life experiences. Free worksheets are available on the Teachers by Teachers Just One Wish Kindness program store. Please email us your answers at just underscore one underscore wish at outlook.com. We would love to see your work. No matter what your story, it's time to make your choice. To speak for those who can't, to help them find their voice. Together we're a mighty crew, together we are strong. Together we will change the world, let kindness be our song.